think I was probably about 10, 11 maybe. Mm-hmm. And it was one of the first years that I actually did jazz. Yeah. And we did like a tribute to music to the ages, uh, the golden ages. Oh, I don't know what it was. But please, had, please tell me you didn't do breakdancing. Never done breakdancing. I can pop and lock it, but mm-hmm. I might pop and lock my, my mm-hmm. leg if I try to spin on my head. <laughs> <laughs> like hold that tiger and we had like this little hat little you know it was kind of like this little Chicago kind of thing but it was out oh, whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. but um, yeah I, t- I, I took for, for those who don't know I took over 20 plus years of, of assorted dance um, I did a little tap did a little musical comedy a little singing mm-hmm. a little dancing I love to sing it I love to sing it and swing it and the moon yeah. yeah, well, that's cool. I mean, I... And I I can actually claim that um, I studied under Fosse mm-hmm. because one of my dance teachers back in Atlanta, mm-hmm. uh, Marcus Guy, yeah. who named his daughter after me, well, first, studied under him. Okay, first of all, let's explain a little bit about who you're talking about because there's a lot of... Fosse, if you do not... Bob know, Fosse. Bob Fosse. Just give a brief description. Brief description of Bob Fosse. He, um, gosh, he choreographed so many amazing things. Did he do that, um, all my all that jazz? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. He yeah, was, all that jazz. He was a beast. Yeah. That well, was some... He goes back to like White Christmas with Bean Crosby. Mm-hmm. He goes back that far. Wow. Um, and the only reason why I know all this, you know, not because not only because I did dance and I studied mm-hmm. a lot of choreographers. Because my aunt, that's all she watches. She watches all black and white. That's all she watches because it's her comfort. It's her comfort. <laughs> it really is. And it's sweet. Yeah. But he was a choreographer. He, they he said he was wife. an alien, you know, because a lot of the stuff he made his dancers do were just, you know, were just un- Oh, he, Marcus was telling me um, that he, the, the whole thing with the smoking during class, that was a thing. Mm-hmm. He'd smoke. That's why he got fucking lung cancer. For crying, smoking, five, six, seven, eight, da 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 da. <laughs> it didn't help. <laughs> but yeah, look at Bob Fosse. Um, he did Pippin. Mm-hmm. Two of my favorites right there. Mm-hmm. Two, two of my favorite musicals. The movie, all that jazz is based, which is weird. Can you imagine me creating a movie about your life mm-hmm. and being basically the director and doing the choreography? And he basically talks about his death. Yeah. And I don't know how long after that movie came out, but I think he passed away <laughs> right probably, shortly afterwards. Probably, because I've seen some of the stuff that he had done, and it was, it was incredible. Just some of the things that he made his dancers do. I mean, even today's choreographer, like like Debbie Allen, for instance, who's a great choreographer, and Paula Abdu, who was also, my God, Fosse put them to shame. <laughs> Debbie Allen and and oh yeah, Debbie Allen and and, um, and Paula Abdul. And now his um, uh, Bob Fosse's wife. Couldn't remember his, his first wife's name, um, Gwen Verdon. Mm-hmm. There is a movie. Um, I want to say it's called Verdon. I think it might be on Netflix. But it's 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 her side of mm-hmm. it's like her perspective mm-hmm. of things, and it's a great great movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but she did um, she did a lot of choreography too. Mm-hmm. Um, she didn't, you know, she did a lot of dancing with him as well. Right. Yeah, he's just, he's, am- he's amazing. He's amazing. Oh, wow. Yeah, good old. But yeah, I can, I can yeah. say that I, I. She studied underneath Bob I Fosse. underneath Bob Fosse. Our little Deb studied underneath. Yes! Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, um, we're going to get to this last one, but I don't, we're not going to get to the whole part. But I want to talk about 80s toys. And get your opinion on these. Okay. Okay. Um, the first one is, of course, if you want to really get into what really frustrated a lot of 80s people, and that is the Rubik's Cube. 
okay? This is a, uh, a, a cube that people like me would sit there and many, many hours and then afterwards we'd throw it up against the And now people go and they're done. And they're done. But a little brief history about Rubik's Cube. Though the Rubik's Cube was invented in 1974, 1974, it rose to international fame in the 80s, becoming a popular pastime for children and adults alike. The Rubik's Cube is a 3D combination puzzle invented in 1974 by Hers, and I'm going to butcher his name for saying this, Herzan Sculpture and Professor of Architecture, Eron Rubik, Eron, or no, Erno Rubik, originally called Magic Cube. That's a nice little trivia question. Mm -hmm. The puzzle was licensed by Rubik to be sold by Pentacle Puzzles in the UK in 1978, and then by Ideal Toy Corp in 1980 via businessman Tuboro Lassizi. <laughs> I'm hoping I'm gonna... And Seven Towns founder Tom Kramer. The Cube was released internationally in 1980 and became one of the most recognized icons in popular culture. It won the 1980 German Game of the Year Special Award for Best Prize as of March 2021, over 450 million cubes have been sold worldwide, making it the world's best-selling public game and best-selling toy. The Rubik's Cube was inducted into the United U.S. National Toy Hall of Fame in 2014. Wow. There we go. So. My dad, my dad won't. Um, they had Rubik's Pyramid, Rubik's Orb, Rubik's this, Rubik's... There were so many other puzzles. Mm -hmm. But Dave, were you aware that there was a cartoon? Uh, yeah. I think I remember it vaguely because I actually saw it about a game. A little glimpse of it was called Rubik's... Rubik's yeah. the Amazing mm -hmm. Cube. <laughs> what a horrible cartoon it was! Oh my... <laughs> Are they really gonna do that? Mm -hmm. They really went there. Oh, it was horrible. Oh, yeah. It was so weird. I think I saw it one, maybe a couple of times, and I just was like. Came out in 83. Uh, okay. Thanks for watching X Marks the Spot, a show that shines the light on the generation that no one talks about. Your host, Breeze Aubrey, and Devin Moore have more stuff to talk about in their podcast. And maybe you might get a chance to be on the show if you are a Generation Xer. So come on back to a show where MTV is still king, big hair is still wild, and the party never ends.